Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we're starting a special tools investigation. As you can imagine, this uh, series of videos will be all about the special tools, which can be found in the main tool palette. It's this little wrench icon. Now, when you click the wrench icon, you will get uh, a sub palette with 18 different tools where you can make all kinds of minute position and character types of adjustments. Uh, to the notes and the entries themselves. Uh, there's basically seven categories of what can be changed here, I guess. Uh, you can change notes, you can change note heads, you can do things with accidentals, stems, beams, ties, and dots. So those are the types of things that we're dealing with in the special tools. There is another way to get to the special tools. If you go to the tool uh, menu over here, you can choose special tools, and then you can get directly to the uh, particular special tool that you want to use if you need to do it that way. So that's also another option. To use a tool, it's rather easy. You just kind of select the one that you want. I've got the note position tool uh, selected here, and then you have to select inside of a measure. And when you do that, you'll get a series of handles, and with these handles, you can make adjustments. Now, as you can see, you can only get handles on one measure at a time. And most of the time, you can only change one handle at a time. Sometimes you can change multiple handles at once, but we'll talk about that as we go. Um, but as, so as you can imagine, uh, these special tools are really for local changes. For example, if I go to the uh, note shape tool, I can double click this handle and change it to an X really quickly, but I can only do one at a time. So if you need to just do one of those, then that's, that's a really easy way to do it. But there are a lot of other uh, mass operation tools in Finale that will uh, do a lot of this um, pretty quickly. So in the Utilities menu, there's a Change uh, menu item here with a bunch of different things, including notes, Note Heads. So this is where we could actually change to the X Note Head and get Xs for all of these Note Heads all at once. So as I'm talking about these uh, special tools throughout these uh, videos, I will be discussing all of the sort of mass change alternatives as well because the special tools is where you're really going to have to deal with local adjustments only. Um, the utilities change is, is where you're going to change a lot of those um, in mass and also there's a bunch of plugins that I'll talk in that will uh, deal with some of the other ones as well. Now as I mentioned to uh, adjust items in a particular measure you have to click on the measure to get those handles and this is something that I learned actually very recently, believe it or not. You can also navigate between measures um, using the option key and the arrows. So if I hold down option and press right arrow, you'll see all of the handles move to the right, left, and you can also go down and up the score and everything. So this is just a, a quick little way to navigate the special tools uh, to from one measure to another. This is something I literally learned a few days ago as I was uh, preparing for these videos. So there you go. When you have the special tools active, there is a special tools menu item that appears at the top. And there are some things uh, dealing with tie direction, which we'll talk about in the tie tool. But there's also this thing called show handles, and it should be checked. You can uncheck it, and the handles will go away which is kind of silly to me because the only way to make adjustments with the special tools is with those handles. So making those go away just basically makes the entire tool useless. So I'm not even sure why they included this option here, but it is there. And if you're not seeing your handles that where you think they should be, maybe double check that to see that that's checked. I don't know why it would ever get unchecked, but um, just one thing to, uh, to check on. Now, the other thing to realize is that the special tools are layer specific. So if I go into this measure where I've got some multiple layers on my piano part and click in that measure, you're only going to see one handle over the whole note. You're not going to see the handles for the layer two. In order to get to those handles, you have actually have to switch to layer two. And when you do that, you'll get handles for all of your notes and rests, in this case, in the note position tool. Uh, so just be aware that if you want to adjust things in layer one, you have to be in layer one, layer two, layer two, etc. So uh, they are layer specific. So each of these special tools will give you sometimes a different set of handles. So this note position tool gives me four handles. Uh, the note head position tool is only going to give me two handles. They're actually a little bit hard to see right here, but there you go. Uh, there's one on each note head. Uh, the same thing with the note shape, you're only going to get two. Uh, the accidental one, you know, you're only going to get the handle on the accidental. If there's no accidentals in the measure, you're not actually not going to get any handles. So I'm trying to click in this tenor sax part and there's no handles. Um, and uh, so other uh, tools will have handles on either side. 
Uh, here's the, the, the stem direction tool, and you can see you get handles on both sides. So uh, the handles have very specific functions to each specific subtool, and obviously as I'm going talking about these subtools individually, I'll tell you exactly what they do. But generally speaking, um, they're sort of uh, either a, a toggle of sorts or they're some sort of um, uh, position manip manipulation tool. So in this case, the stem direction tool is a toggle, and you can see that the upward uh, handle here is checked because this particular layer one note is frozen upwards. Actually, if I go to this tenor sax part, you'll see none of them checked. That's because this is in the default direction, but you can tell the stem to go upwards by clicking the, the top one or downwards by clicking the bottom one. And if you have none of them selected, then it goes towards its default direction. So this is an instance of a toggle. Um, other tools like the note position tool uh, are not so much toggles, but they're actually uh, handles that you can uh, move left and right and sometimes up and down depending on the particular uh, tool that you're using. A lot of these handles will have contextual menus. So if I go into the note shape tool and uh, right click one of these, you'll see a contextual menu come up. And usually there is probably a remove manual adjustment option here. Um, and there's sometimes an edit option. And the edit options will sometimes take you to a specific window dealing with uh, things that are particular to that particular tool. So in this case, we're talking about note head settings. And this is where we can actually change um, the fonts or the character of this particular note head. And we can do all kinds of other things uh, in here, which I'll talk about as we get going. Uh, not all tools have contextual menus. Let's see, here's the articulation tool. It has a very similar one. Uh, let's find one that's very different. The note position tool just has remove manual adjustments and it has some unlinking and linking options here, which I'm going to talk about in a second. But again, not all of these tools will have the handles uh, or have the contextual menus. Um, some of them will and some of the contextual menus will be different. And again, I will talk about all of this uh, individually as we go through uh, each tool. Most of the tools will have some sort of remove manual adjustment option here. And uh, this is basically doing just that. So if I make a, a change here, I can go in here and just remove manual adjustment. The quicker way to do this, uh, or the shortcut to doing this, is with that handle selected, all you have to do is press the delete key, and that basically does the same thing. It does basically the remove manual adjustments. The clear key will also work. The clear key is something that, uh, on a Mac at least, we use all the time to clear manual adjustments. So that works as well. And interestingly, you can do this with multiple handles selected. So if I move both of those and just kind of lasso select all of these and press delete, they'll all go back to where they should be originally. Another interesting thing is that when you have a single handle selected, uh, if you go down to this little message bar here, you'll see some uh, information about this. And the information will be you know, specific to the particular tool that you're using. In this case, this is an entry offset. So it's uh, listed at 0, 0. But if I move it off to the right a little bit, you'll start to see a, a, um, a value of 0 0.05556 in this case uh, in the horizontal. Um, so if you ever need to kind of really fine tune this and figure out what you're doing, uh, you can check the message bar to see uh, exactly the adjustments that you're making. Now, one other thing I want to talk about, let's talk about linked parts. So I'm going to go over to my tenor sax part. Some of these tools, not all of these tools, some of these tools and their functionality can be unlinked. For example, in the note position tool right here, if I move one of these um, uh, notes a little bit, you'll see that it turns orange. And as we know, orange means that it's unlinked. So basically, whatever I'm doing here in the part is not going to show up in the score. In the score, you'll see that it's orange, but it will be in its original position, right? So all of the unlinking and relinking and all the stuff that you're familiar with with linked parts, this will all work the same way. If I relink in all the parts, this will turn black. And then if we go back to the uh, tenor sax part, you'll see that it will go back to its original position. This also means that the modifier keys that we're used to uh, using for unlinking within the score, so if I hold down Command on a Mac and drag, you'll see that I can drag this while also unlinking in the score. Obviously, if I did that without Command held down, it will move this, and it will also move it uh, in the, the part as well. This adjustment's a little bit hard to see, but that's, that's the idea. And then the opposite is true within the part. So if I hold down Command key 
and drag it, you'll see that it won't unlink, which means that the score is going to follow the position uh, that I've just moved. So it's still black, so it's still linked, and that adjustment is going to be made in the score as well. So all the familiar unlinking type of techniques that you're used to using will work for these special tools, or as I should say, some of these special tools, um, because not all of these special tools are unlinkable. In fact, the note position tool is unlinkable, but the note head position tool is not unlinkable. So, you know, I drag that. If I command drag that, you will see it not unlink. It does not turn orange. It almost seems arbitrary to me which of these tools are linkable and which are unlinkable. I mean, some of them make sense. There's certain things that you don't want to unlink or wouldn't make sense to unlink, like the note shape tool. Like if you change to an X note head, that's not an unlinkable um, property. It's, you want that X note head to be in the score and the parts, or presumably you do. Um, anyway, Finale doesn't let you have different note heads between the score and the parts. So, uh, but other things like things that are mostly related to position, like the note position tool, a lot of the uh, beam tools um, can all be unlinkable. Um, it's somewhat random in my opinion in some instances and you know again as we're going I'll, I'll point out which ones are are linkable and which ones are unlinkable and then one more thing about linked parts a very specific case is when you have voice linked parts here like I have this shared alto sax uh, one and two part so I'm doing the whole thing in the manage parts where I've got my alto sax one using that uh, staff and I've got a, a voice specified for it and everything. This is the, the voiced linked parts. With these voiced linked parts, none of these special tools are unlinkable. This is a, a kind of weird limitation. Um, I'm sure there's some great technical reason why they, they couldn't do this, but uh, this note position tool, uh, for example, in the alto one part, because this is a voiced linked part, I cannot move the position of this uh, the note at all. In fact, I cannot use any of the special tools at all on this uh, voiced linked part. So it is a a great uh, limitation, particularly if you're getting into some really comp complex stuff that requires a lot of special tools manipulation between the score and the parts. If you're sharing a staff, it's almost impossible to do that. And um, a lot of people for this very reason will set up dummy staffs for the Alto 1 and Alto 2 parts in this particular example, where you have a hidden Alto 1 part and a hidden Alto 2 part. Um, and then just copy and paste so that you're actually using a real linked part without the voicings in it that will allow you to do some of these uh, special tools manipulations. I cover this in one of the linked parts video talking about that dummy staffs with, you know, hiding and, uh, you know, doing it as real linked parts as, as opposed to voice linked parts. This is another reason to do that. These special tools um, are, are basically not usable in the parts uh, with, uh, with these voice link parts. You can still move them in the score, but these changes will not actually appear in the linked part. So if I were to go to my alto one part, you'll see that second measure. It's basically where it's supposed to be. So uh, definitely an interesting limitation, but the special tools will not do anything uh, with voiced linked parts. All right, and so there's your little introduction and overview for the special tools. Uh, there's going to be a lot of these videos. I'm going to almost cover one at a time. There might be some videos where I'm covering two, maybe three of these tools at once. Um, but generally, uh, I'm just going to cover uh, one tool in one video. Hopefully, they'll be a little bit on the shorter side. Maybe. We'll see, depending on how complicated these, these tools are. Uh, some of them might be longer than others, but that's the idea. And Interestingly, it's, it was hard for me to decide how to call these in terms of basic, intermediate, or advanced level tutorials. I'm calling these all intermediate tutorials right now, but generally I'm covering basically the intermediate stuff all the way through the advanced uh, stuff that has to do with these particular tools. So I guess you consider these videos intermediate to advanced. Um, and yeah, so that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, come back and we'll get uh, started right away. The first one we're going to deal with is this note position tool, and that will be the next video. So once again, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you soon on the next video.